Hi everyone, so uh, I want to continue here by doing an example uh, on how to write electron configuration for an element and then I'm going to kind of close off this discussion of electron configuration by talking about the electron configuration of ions, okay? But let's first talk about the electron configuration of uh, some exceptions in the electron configuration. Um, in the um, Remember that when we go to um, when we go through this uh, Aufbau principle, you notice that we go to the 4s uh, orbital first before the 3d orbitals. As it turns out, the 4s orbital is actually more stable uh, than the 3d orbital because of the electron pen uh, because of the orbital penetration factor, right? So we talked about the fact that by the time you get to the 4s and 3d uh, orbitals, their um, energy levels are so close together that a little bit of stability provided by orbital penetration is enough to bring the 4s to be uh, more stable than the 3d and that's illustrated in the electron configuration of things like um, transition metals because if you see things like uh, scandium for example or titanium here you see that the electron configuration is always starting with 4s2 uh, and then the 3D orbital corresponding to these elements. So this would be 3D2, for example. And we know that they're 3D because they're in the D block, right? They're, these are D block elements, okay? Uh, so I want to point that out here. And let's work through an example uh, on the electron configuration of uh, mercury. So one of the things you want to do right away is uh, when you look at this question like this, say ground state electron configuration of mercury, you have to first figure out how many electrons are in mercury. And this you can do just by looking up the periodic table very quickly. Uh, and if you do that, you find that mercury has 80, uh, atomic number of 80, which means that in the uh, atomic state, it would also have 80 electrons, okay? And then what we have to do is just answer some of the questions related to the electron configuration. Now, because there's all of these questions that we have to answer, it uh, probably is not, it's not, doesn't make sense to write the noble gas configuration because then we wouldn't be able to answer some of these questions like how many electrons have, you know, plus one half or upspin. So what we're going to do is just write the full electron configuration of mercury. And we're going to start with, um, we're going to do this in the, in the scratch paper. Uh, so we have ele 80 electrons. And what you have to remember is then you have to remember all the sequence of um, electrons. Okay, so you have to start uh, orbital so you have to start with the most stable orbital first which is your 1s so you get 1s 2 and then 2s 2 2p 6 3s 2 3p 6 and then remember that from there we go to 4s first so 4s 2 and then 3d uh, 10 and then afterwards we go to 4p um, 4p 6 Okay, and then we're going to continue it down here. Uh, then we go to, instead of 4D, we would go to 5S instead. And again, this is something you can, um, you know, you wouldn't know uh, because we have to calculate the energy, but remember that you can use that Aufbau, uh, the, the building up principle, the mnemonic device I told you before where you draw that, uh, you know the the diagram with the arrows in it and that helps you figure out which orbital you should go at next so 4p6 is then 5s2 and then then we go to the 4d after that so then it's 4d10 okay and so on now one of the things you might want to stop here for a minute is to think about where should this uh, electron configuration end okay because we know that it's going to be a um, Hg, we know that it's mercury, and mercury is in the d block, so we know that the last uh, electrons have to be in a d orbital, and then what's going to help us figure out which d orbital it is, is to look at the um, period where this element uh, is located in. If you take look back at the periodic table, you notice that uh, Hg is located here, which is period 6. Now, if you remember period 6, it starts with 6s on this side, and it's going to end with 5d. Okay, so then what that helps us determine is what orbitals we should end in. And so we can go back to our electron configuration, which I was in the middle of writing here, and just say that we're starting, you know, we go with 5s, um, which is this orbital already, and then 4d10. And then afterwards, of course, we're going to go uh, with our 4, uh, with our um, 5p, okay? 
So we're going to go with our 5P, 5P6. Now afterwards, then we're going to go into the 6 period, which is 6S2. But remember, one of the things you have to keep in mind here is that when you go to 6S, then you're going to go to 5D, but the 5D then goes into the series of lanthanide elements, which is all in the F block, okay? So then you want to be careful when you're writing this. So then what I want to do is then go back to my electron configuration. I want to continue this by writing a 4F, okay, 4F, 14 before I go to the 5D. And then when you go to the 5D, of course, then you count all the way to Mercury and you find that you need 5D10 in order to complete this electron configuration. And you can check again, make sure that you have 80 electrons in total. Uh, so you have 10 here, you have another 10, that's 20, this is 30. And then you have 38, 48, you have 50 right here, you have 70, and then you have 80. So you have a total of 80 electrons, which is exactly what we're looking for. Now we can go and answer some of the questions that are being asked there in this example, which is, first off, is just how many electrons occupy uh, atomic orbitals with n equals 3. We go back to our electron configuration and just look at the ones that start with um, 3 in the uh, principal quantum number, okay? So I'm going to use a different color here to highlight this. But here's one that starts with 3, here's another one that starts with 3, and here's another one that starts with 3. So then the n equals 3 uh, orbitals, uh, the electrons are n, n equals 3 would be 2 plus 6 plus 10, which is 18 electrons. Okay, so there's 18 electrons with n equals 3. And then the second question asks for how many electrons occupy d atomic orbitals. And um, you use another, yet another color to highlight this uh, number right here. So d atomic orbitals. So we can look for the first d is this one right here. Okay, and then here's the second d orbital. And then here's the third d orbital, 5d, and then so the d orbitals, electron, uh, there are 30 of them, okay, 30 electrons. And then the last one is asked, I mean the, the third one is asking for um, pz atomic orbitals, electrons in pz atomic orbitals. Now if you remember, each p orbitals, if I kind of open this p orbital up a little bit, remember that p orbital has three degenerate orbitals, right? And so each of these orbitals has uh, two electrons, okay, up, down, up, down, up, down, like that. And then one of them is Px, the other one is Py, and the middle one is actually called Pz. And so you notice that in six P electrons here, two of these six is always the Pz uh, atomic orbitals, okay, two electrons are always in the P sub Z atomic orbitals. So then we can count the P orbitals first off. Let's look at this one here. Uh, here's another one, right? Missed that one earlier. And then here's another one. And then let's see if there's another. Okay, there's one more right here. Okay. And I think that's it. So we got one, two, three, four of them. And each one has uh, two, only two of these elect six electrons are actually PZ. So P sub Z electrons. There should be eight of them because there's four p orbitals and uh, only two in each p orbital is uh, p sub z. And the last question asks for um, how many of them has half uh, plus one half spin. Now that's fairly easy to, to determine because you know that in the electron configuration uh, each orbital can have two electrons. One is plus one half, the other one's negative one half. So if I have 80 electrons half of these 80 must have plus uh, upward spin. Okay, so then uh, plus one half spin. There should be 40 electrons, half of 80, that would have uh, plus one half up spin. Okay, or, or up spin. So that's an example of how we, we take uh, electron configuration information and answer various questions related to the structure of that element. And again, these are all very important questions to ask because if something has a d orbital, that means it's going to have a certain property that, that an element that doesn't have d orbital might not have. Okay, so then we, that's why we're asking all of these, you know, very specific questions related to the electron configuration of the element.
Now, the next question I want to mention is just the, elect uh, the exception. The next point I want to make is the exception. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, you know, with these transition metal elements, you start with uh, the 4S, right, in this fourth period, and then you go to 3D. Now, generally speaking, you can just follow that trend up to a certain point. There's two elements that have exceptions, and these are chromium and copper. So if you look at chromium, if you look at the number in the periodic table, chromium has 24 electrons. And so what you would expect to, uh, to do um, you know, with chromium is you're going to expect to do the noble gas, which is argon, and then 4s2, and then 3d4, right? 1, 2, 3, 4. But as it turns out, the uh, experimental observation that matches the behavior of chromium is not 4s2 and 3d4, but it is 4s1, okay, 4s1 and 3d5, and we have the same uh, we have the same uh, exception with regards to copper. When we look at copper, we find that copper we expect the electron configuration to be argon 4s2 and 3d9, but what we actually observe is argon 4s1 and 3d10. And this is generally uh, being explained as the fact that with, you know, either half-filled or completely filled d orbitals having more stability than a d orbital that is not completely, f you know, filled or half-filled like this. So if there's only one more electron needed to make this uh, half-filled d orbitals, then that's what the element prefers to adopt rather than having a, a you know a 3d4 it would rather to have 3d5 and same thing with the 3d9 versus 3d10 this exception is not something you you're expected to know in advance so you can't really predict this uh, unless you know you know quite a bit about quantum mechanics so this is something at this point that you just have to memorize unfortunately there's nothing else you can do about it except memorize these two exceptions now I want to mention that similar patterns repeat for elements below chromium and copper. So if we're talking about things like, um, you know, things like uh, manganese here, which is below copper, you're going to have that same pattern. But now, of course, you're in the fifth period, so it's going to be 5s1 and 4d5 instead of uh, 5s2 and 4d4. Okay, and similarly for um, silver you're going to also have 5s1 and 4d10 okay so this is something to keep in mind uh, you want to know this exception exists